you know, I've seen a lot of posts on social media asking what these lights mean. And 99% of the time, they mean exactly the same thing, especially for those of us that are running oversized tires. Today, I'm going to show you how to check it, and I'm going to explain how to repair it. So stick around. You're going to want to see this. Welcome back to Jeeping for Beginners, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we are talking about your ABS and traction control light when they pop on at the same time. For those of you with a Jeep Wrangler or any Jeep product that is running oversized tires, this is something that you're actually going to bump into at least once during your ownership. So, that being said, I am semi-prepared for it, and I already know what it is, but I'm gonna show you guys how I figured that out and how you can figure out how to solve it for yourself. So, let's dive right in, shall we? All right, guys, so any time that a warning light comes on on your dash, it is always handy to have a form of a code reader to be able to see what the Jeep is talking about. Truthfully, this will narrow down your search really, really quick, but if you don't have one, that's perfectly okay. I'm gonna explain how to solve this problem without it. Now, in my particular case, I was able to narrow down my problem with my ABS and my traction control system to my driver's side front tire, which ironically has also been squeaking quite a bit for the last couple of weeks and I've been chasing it trying to figure out what it is but fortunately for me the light came on and actually pointed directly to it so with or without a scan tool today we are going to be looking at my right front wheel and let me show you what I found all right now first things first you want to make sure to lift up the front end and put it on jack stands Though you can do one wheel at a time, I always recommend getting both up off the ground so that you can check them both and see what we're talking about. Let me show you what I found and what I can guarantee you're gonna find when you see these lights pop on your dash. With the weight of the Jeep off the wheel, as you can see, the wheel is free to spin. Here's what you're checking for, okay? That light indicates that you've got a sensor that's bad. That sensor is built in directly to the wheel bearing assembly. So if you've got a sensor reading bad, you've got a bad wheel bearing. So what we're going to do is take the tire at the top and the bottom and you're going to shake up and down. And then side to side and shake side to side. As you can see, this one's tight. And when I spin it, it doesn't make any noise. Now I had mentioned that it was my driver's side front tire that had triggered the code. So let's go see what that one looks like. Now this is my driver's side front tire. As I spin it, and I don't know if you can hear that on camera, wow, this thing is making a lot of noise. But to truly check it, <clears throat> again, we're gonna take the top of the tire and the bottom of the tire, and we're gonna shake it. That indicates a loose wheel bearing. Now, for those of you who don't know, your wheel bearing is the actual main point of contact that keeps the wheel and tire itself attached to your axle. So when that wheel bearing starts to get loose, which again happens so much easier with the heavier weight oversized tires, you need to address it immediately because you run the risk of it coming completely apart and losing your wheel and tire. And I don't have to tell you that that would be a nightmare to see on the road. Now you can pick up a wheel bearing and hub assembly for a JK Wrangler or even a JL Wrangler for relatively inexpensive. Most parts houses have them from anywhere from 120 to 160 bucks, depending upon which brand you want to go with. Comes with new wiring for your new sensor and usually a one to five year warranty, again, depending upon the brand that you have. Now in my particular case, as I've been doing this for 20 years and I know the wheel bearings are an issue that are gonna pop up from time to time, I always keep a spare with me. So all I've gotta do is swap out my hub assembly for a nice tight one, put it all back together, and I'll be all set to go to work again tomorrow. In your case, it's the same way. 
pick one up from a local parts store. If you can, always have an extra with you because this is something that is known to fail. <laughs> Now, although I didn't actually film the replacement of the wheel bearing assembly, for those of you that want to know, this is basically what it looks like. Again, this is the primary point of contact that holds your rim and tire attached to the vehicle, and it's only attached by three 13 millimeter 12 point bolts on the back, and your axle goes right through it. This little guy, although extremely heavy and designed to take abuse, is the weak link in your steering and suspension system. So like I said, wouldn't be a bad idea to always keep an extra one of these kicking around just in case that light pops on and you find yourself in a semi-dangerous situation. Meanwhile, once again, my name is Josh. This is Jeeping for Beginners. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to put it in the comments down below. In the meantime, safe travels, happy Jeeping, and we will see you next time.